Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. In this video I'm going to talk about Tinsha X99 D4 AD12-B version 1.0 motherboard. I have already tested Klisre X99 D4 version 1.0 motherboard, which looks almost identical except of the heatsink radiators and two SATA 3 ports on Tinsha X99 D4, two SATA 3 ports under the graphics card are looking to the side, on Klisre X99 D4, two of the SATA ports are looking upwards and are blocked by the graphics card if you are using anything of a decent length and two slot graphics card. After looking at those two motherboards, I thought it's exactly the same motherboard, just a slightly different motherboard layout and different color scheme. Fortunately or unfortunately, this is not exactly the case. Let's start with the motherboard specification and then I will tell you about all the test results. As any other Chinese X99 motherboard, this motherboard holds socket for Intel LJ2011 version 3 CPUs. Presumably it shall support Intel Core i7, 5000, 6000 series and Intel Xeon E5, V3 and V4. But in the motherboard description on AliExpress page you will not find anything about the i7 CPUs and anything about the V4 Xeons. It only states that Xeon E5, V3 series are supported. The AliExpress page also specifies that this motherboard is using Intel X99 chipset and not its server variant which is Intel C612 chipset. Well, I will check that and we will see what we find out. There are two memory slots on the motherboard which claims to support DDR4, UD, ECC registered and ECC unbuffered memories. There are four USB 3 ports and four USB 2 ports on the rear side of the motherboard as well as connectors for the front panel for two USB 3 ports and two USB 2 ports. On the motherboard itself we have four SATA 3 ports, one NVMe PCI Express 3.0 x4 port for SSD drives, as well as a slot for Wi-Fi cards. Unfortunately I don't have Wi-Fi cards to test that. One PCI Express 3.0 x4 and one PCI Express 3.0 x16. Basic Realtek 5.1 audio and basic Realtek gigabit network adapter. Let's move on to the test results. First, let's figure out if this motherboard actually has X99 chipset and not the service C612 chipset. HW monitor, HW info and CPU Z, as well as ADA64 all are displaying that this motherboard is actually using X99 chipset. Thus, I tend to believe that it's true. Unfortunately, Tinsha X99 D4 has exactly the same BIOS as Klisre X99 D4, which means it's very limited and does not have options to tune memory timings. That's why I have flashed BIOS from Huanangzhi X99 F8, and this motherboard also working perfectly fine with this BIOS. All the tests I have conducted were performed with Huanangzhi X99 F8 BIOS. I see no reason to test the stock BIOS because the stock BIOS is limited and I do not recommend using it under any circumstances if you can just easily flush BIOS from Huanangzhi X99 F8 or from Huanangzhi X99 TF. The same as Klisre X99 D4, this motherboard has BIOS lock, so in order to use FPT or flash programming tool from Intel and flush X99 F8 BIOS, you need to go to your BIOS settings and disable BIOS lock. After that you can easily use FPT tool to flush whatever BIOS you want. As with any other motherboard, I have performed my usual test suite. USB 3 ports were tested with Crystal Disk Mark and external SSD drive, Samsung T5. SATA 3 ports were tested with my Samsung EVO and Samsung Pro drives. NVMe port was also tested with my Samsung PCI Express drive. PCI Express X4 slot was tested with the same SSD through expansion card. PCI Express X16 slot was tested with multiple graphics cards. Everything was working fine, no complaints, no issues here. It's possible to regulate speed for 4 pin fans. 3 pin fans are unfortunately working at full speed. There is not much I can say about the audio quality, but it's working. Unfortunately, manual driver installation is required. Link to the page to download drivers will be in the video description. Network port is also working properly. I have tested copying large files as well as running Crystal Disk Mark over network drive. Windows Sleep Mode works on this motherboard, Linux is working with no issues, booting from NVMe drive is also supported, Turbo Boost is working fine with the two of my Xeon E5s I have tested, tuning memory timings with X99 F8 BIOS working, RAM voltage I am not sure how to validate that because there is a setting in the motherboard BIOS but I'm not sure if these voltages are actually applied or not because there are no sensors on the motherboard to validate what is the current memory voltage 
and I was not able to find any software which would be able to report me what is the current memory voltage and not what is my memory XMP voltage. VRM on this motherboard seems to be 6 phases, which is standard for Chinese X99 motherboards. Still, I'm not an expert in this area, so see yourself. For me, it seems like there are 6 phases, each phase consists of 2 components A3004, K3901G, and A3016, K3411G. Unfortunately, I'm not able to find any meaningful information on the internet about these thinnies, so if you have any knowledge or any idea how much power this can deliver and if it's good or bad, feel free to leave me a comment. To validate VRM or CPU power system on this motherboard, I have performed Prime95 test for one hour with a Xeon E5 2660V3 with Turbo Boost Unlock. After an hour of the stress test, VRM temperature was more than 70 degrees Celsius. Everything under 85 degrees Celsius is kinda safe, but this is definitely on the high side, and if you plan to install 1650v3 and overclock it, then I would strongly recommend you to install some extra fan to have any kind of airflow on the VRM zone. As with any other Chinese X99 motherboard, we have just one working motherboard temperature sensor, and this motherboard temperature sensor also showing temperature with minus 20 degrees Celsius offset. Let's move to the CPU specific testing. Kinsha X99 D4 was tested with the Xeon E5 2660v3 and Xeon E5 1650v3. Let's start with 2660. Maximum RAM speed as expected DDR4-2133. I have tested the following RAM configurations. Two sticks, 4GB each. Unfortunately, these memory modules do not work on this motherboard. I have seen multiple reports online stating that this memory is not compatible with the Chinese X99 boards. That's why I have purchased myself two sticks of such chip memory to validate if it's true or not. At least on this motherboard, these memory sticks refuse to work or this motherboard refuses to work with these memory sticks. Every other DDR4 memory stick I have tested on this motherboard was working fine. I have tested two sticks 16GB each DDR4-2666, two sticks 16GB each DDR4-2133 registered ECC memory, as well as 64GB two sticks 32GB each DDR4-2666 registered ECC memory. Turbo Boost Unlock works on this motherboard with modified BIOS. CPU power management does not work as usual. As soon as CPU hits its TDP limit, it starts to downclock itself. Also, on this motherboard I had to apply additional BIOS settings to make sure that the Turbo Boost Unlock system is working properly. Without these BIOS settings, the system was not booting properly and hanging during the boot process. So what you have to do, you have to go to RC Setup, Advanced Power Management Configuration, Power Technology, set it to Custom, IOTG setting, set to Enable. As well as go to CPU, Advanced PM Tuning, Energy Performance BS, and set Energy Performance Tuning to Disable, Energy Performance BS setting to Performance. After changing these values, my system is working stable with Turbo Boost Unlock. Geekbench 5 and User Benchmark results are available in the video description for those who are interested. With the Xeon E5 1650v3, we have the following results. Maximum RAM speed is DDR4-2400, as expected. Two sticks, 4GB each, which did not work with the Xeon E5 2660, also do not work with the Xeon E5 1650. Unfortunately, this motherboard is just not compatible with this chip memory. The rest memory configurations I have tested were working perfectly fine. 16GB, two sticks, 8GB each, DDR4-3000. 32GB, 2 sticks, 16GB each, DDR4-2666, 32GB, 2 sticks, 16GB each, DDR4-2133, registered ECC memory, 64GB, 2 sticks, 32GB each, DDR4-2666, registered ECC memory. When it comes to overclocking, I was able to launch the CPU at 4.5GHz, but it was not stable. Much to my surprise, 1650v3 worked stable at 4.4GHz on this motherboard. I did not run any stress tests because the temperatures were way too high for that, but I was able to successfully run Cinebench R20 benchmark without a crash. On previous motherboards I was not able to achieve that, and system was crashing. 4.3 was stable, 4.4 not stable. On this motherboard somehow I have achieved 4.4 and it was more or less stable. With a better cooling and with a better airflow probably 4.5GHz would also be possible, but I would really not recommend that. 
Links to Geekbench 5 and user benchmark results are available in the video description for those who are interested, as always. Unfortunately, Core i7-6800K does not work on this motherboard, or this motherboard does not work with Core i7-6800K. I have reached out to the AliExpress seller where I have bought this motherboard, and he has confirmed that Core i7-6800K is not working on this motherboard. I have also asked about non-working memory sticks, but did not get any meaningful answer. I guess that's all you need to know about Tintra X99D4, and now we have enough information to draw a conclusion. Right now the motherboard is being sold on AliExpress for 65 to 85 euros, which I believe is way too much for this motherboard. From the pros I can name small form factor, PCI Express X4, and most of the features are working. It also working fine with Huanan GX99 F80 bias. On the cons side we have small flaws like broken temperature sensors and limitations such as only two RAM slots and half-locked BIOS. But the biggest downside is that this motherboard does not support Xeon E5 V4 CPUs and Intel Core i7 CPUs. This is very annoying, but if you are able to find this motherboard for let's say 55 euros, you can still consider it. For the price of 65 to 85 euros, I would strongly recommend to go to Huanan GX99 8M. That motherboard feels better, looks better, supports all the CPUs and does not require you to flash custom buys for the sake of tuning memory timings. My score for Tinsha X99 D4 would be 5 out of 10. Link to the AliExpress shop where I have purchased the motherboard will be in the video description. I have also ordered myself Tinsha X99 D8 motherboard, which is supposed to be the same as Klisre X99 D8, but because Klisre X99 D4 and Tinsha X99 D4 happen to be actually different motherboards, I decided to test Tinsha X99 D8 as well. When this motherboard will arrive to me, who knows? As right now there is giant human malware going out here and there, shipment might be delayed and factories might be parallelized for a time being. As soon as I receive my Tinsha X99 D8, I will review the motherboard and provide the information on my channel. But for now that's all I have for you. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope you have enjoyed it, goodbye.